In today's video, we are gonna do our first project in the AI engineer skills for beginner series. We are gonna take what we learned from episode one and two. That was the OpenAI API plus Python and how we can use AI tools to generate code to do our first project. The project is gonna be to create a chatbot that can interact with a YouTube video. So we're basically gonna transcribe a YouTube video with maybe OpenAI's Whisper. We're gonna use GPT-4 to interact with the content in a UI we have created from scratch. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So let's just get started. This video is sponsored by HubSpot. We are already at episode 3 as you can see here and I think it's time to do our first project. Maybe as I said in the intro we are going to use the skills we have learned from the two previous episodes from the OpenAI API and how to code using AI tools. And the project is going to be to create an app that we can actually chat with a YouTube video. Here is kind of the outline I created for this. So we want to insert a YouTube URL into a UI box. We want to click a button that kind of transcribes this video from the video mp4 file, I guess, over to text. Uh, we have a con context limit here about 8K, 8K because we are going to use the GPT-4 model. In future episodes, maybe we can take bigger videos like hour long videos. Maybe put this in some kind of a rag system that really can retrieve the information we ask about. But for this episode, we're just gonna keep it very simple. We're gonna use OpenAI's GPT-4 API to interact with the content. We can ask questions, summarize, etc. So the plan is to kind of take that transcribed video in as context for the chatbot, right? And we're gonna create a UI with a text and response box and maybe some other stuff we'll see. Uh, basically, all the tools we're gonna use is gonna be ChatGPT-4. Um, I prefer that. You could also use ChatGPT, but I'm gonna use GPT-4, I think. I think we're just gonna go straight into the flow chart here. So we have a YouTube video. Uh, we want to use PyTube, I think, to convert or download that video. When we have downloaded that video, we want to use MoviePy to convert it to MP3. So this is a part of FFmpeg, so we have to install that. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave a link in the description. And when we have the mp3 file, we want to use OpenAI's Whisper. And we also want to use PyDub to maybe chunk this into smaller chunks. We'll see. Uh, when we have transcribed the mp3 file uh, with Whisper, we can use GPT-4 API to kind of start to interact with the text file. So we're going to try to insert the text file into the chatbot's context window or system prompt. We'll see. And the final product is gonna be if the users can interact with the YouTube video, ask questions and stuff about the transcript. Uh, so that is basically the flow chart for this. Pretty simple and yeah, pretty cool project, I think. In the age of AI, data is getting more and more valuable, but to use it well, we need the right tools. Python is one of those tools, and it's not as complicated as it sounds, especially with a little help from today's sponsor, HubSpot. They are giving away a free ebook called An Introduction to Python, a guide for marketers, developers, and data analysis. The ebook is a friendly guide that illuminates Python's capabilities without overwhelming you with code. It's designed to be practical, accessible, and immediately useful. Take chapter 2 Methods and Functions, for instance. It's a Python glossary complete with examples that bring terms and definitions to life. This chapter will help you speak the language of Python and make it easier to cooperate with developers and apply Python scripts to your data analysis tasks. HubSpot has generously made this ebook available for free. All you need to do is click the link in the description below and download your copy. Dive into this guide, start adding Python to your arsenal. A big thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the project. Before we go ahead, let's just go over everything we want to do here. Uh, it's gonna be Python based. We're gonna use, I think we're gonna use PyTube to download the YouTube video. We're gonna use MoviePy to take it from MP4 to MP3. PyDub to chunk the MP3 segments if we have to. Depends on how big the, um, the files are. We're gonna use OpenAI's Whisper to give it from MP3 to text. And we're gonna use GPT-4 API to interact. Just like we said in the, um, the flowchart. So I think we're just gonna get straight into it, start creating the back end before we move on to the front end. Okay, let's just start off by looking at, uh, we have a system prompt we kind of used in our previous episode. It's pretty straightforward. Software developer, deep expertise in Python programming. Your goal is to assist the user writing high quality, efficient, error-free Python code. Uh, 
uh, priority also optimize efficient solutions use the pep 8 style guide uh, a company you call it explanations or comments always thinking a step-by-step -step way of creating a plan before you write the code uh, so that's basically a simple system prompt you're gonna use uh, we're gonna use GPT-4 in my case and I think we're just gonna start off with something simple let's just start off by hello can you create a simple Python function that downloads a YouTube video from a URL in mp4 format with the file name temp video mp4 let's just try that hopefully this will use PyTub yeah great I have been using that before I know that works so I'm happy with that so we need to pip install PyTube yes we need to import PyTube and import YouTube perfect okay so we need to set our URL somewhere where is that uh, okay your URL actually so there is our URL just create a variable called URL I think that's easier yeah so just set our URL and uh, other than that it's pretty much the same okay so let's test this let's copy it uh, I'm just gonna test this locally now I'm not gonna do rep uh, lit or anything yet so uh, yeah just set our URL and test it so I'm gonna pick one of my own videos here uh, I think we're just gonna do the fine-tuning video on GPT-3 Turbo check it out if you haven't so let's copy that link let's go back here paste it in here save that and let's try it so python youtube chat download completed successfully okay we need to test the file okay great that seems to work perfect uh, I think I'm gonna move this part down here uh, just to have the URLs like this okay okay now let's go okay great now I need to convert the mp4 file above into an mp3 file so previous I have been using moviepy great uh, remember this is a wrapper of something called ffmpeg uh, if you haven't installed that before, uh, I'm going to leave a link to this guide here. Uh, it's a pretty good guide, and but it can be like, it's a bit work to install it, but once you have done it, you can have it. So yeah, I'm going to leave a link to this so you can follow along if you haven't done that before. Uh, but other than that, let's take a look at our function here. So yeah, you need to pip install MoviePy. I have done that. And um, yeah, this seems good. So we convert so temp video to temp audio. Okay, great. So let's just test this and see if our path holds up. Uh, I kind of need to think we need to set our path a bit different. Uh, but let's just do this. So do our function. We can move this now down here, right? So let's move that. Uh, okay, so let's try this now, but I think we need to change our paths here Okay, so we're gonna download the video again, and then we're gonna try to convert it into an mp3 file Okay, seems to be working. That's good. So we didn't need to set our path anymore It's just gonna look in our default path perfect mp4 to mp3 conversion completed successfully Let's go back to our folder. Yeah, you can see we have an mp3 file here. Let's listen I don't know if you heard that, but that worked. <laughs> uh, I think I have the audio turned off, but that's fine. Yeah, that's a great start. So if we head over here to with the whisper documentation, so speech to text, you can see we have something called longer inputs. Supports files that are less than 25 MB. So our file is, uh, it's 14, okay. Maybe we can try it. Let's try that. It says 25 megabytes. So maybe we can do the whole thing here. 
So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to the API reference. We are just gonna copy, uh, let's find create transcription. So here you can see it's kind of an example of an uh, Whisper API. So I wanna copy this, right? So let's copy this, head back to chat GPT. Then I'm just gonna go next. I want to create a function that transcribes the mp3 file to text using OpenAI Whisper API. Here are some documentation for the API. Then we just paste in what we copied and let's give it a spin here and see if we get a function that works. Seems very complicated. So I'm just gonna go make the function much simpler. I think it's a bit over the top. Yeah, that is kind of what I'm looking for. Make it simple. Uh, okay, so let's copy that and try to replace it. Uh, so let's remove this one, right, like this, okay, paste in the new one, uh, we have OpenAI, we have our API key, great, I think we're just gonna add in, we can save this now, if this is gonna work, right, so let's just clean this up a bit, and uh, paste it in here, right, let's go also, then see, uh, we wanna save, the uh, response to our text file, right? Certainly, this can be saved. Output text file, great. Okay, so it's gonna do it like this, and it's gonna be saved to transcribe text. Yeah, that's good. So we can copy, let's just copy the function now uh, all the way down here, right? And let's go back. Okay, so we need to uh, uh, we need to grab this one too because we changed up that. Okay, but we can still print it. That's fine. Now, uh, hopefully, this will work. So let's try it again. Let's clear this and let's go again. Uh, okay, so we have an error here. Uh, transcribe is not defined. Yeah, I can see. Uh, this is the part we need to print, right? So let's try to update that. Uh, so we have an error, okay. Has no attribute create. Let's ask about this. An error has occurred. Okay, let's try again. So let's just copy the function part here. Great, but we also want to save it. So, okay, but we wanna print and save the transcribed file. Okay, so let's copy that part. Let's go back here. Let's remove this function, right? Paste in our new one. So this is gonna be API key. So I need, we think we need to set this to API key. Or we can just do API key equals it equals this, right? Okay, that should be fine. Need this part. Paste it in here. And save. Clear. Okay, let's try again. No search file. Uh, okay. So this can't be on top here. God, a lot of back and forward here. Let's try it now. Okay, finally, that looks good. So you can see printed all the video text here. Uh, transcription saved. Okay, so let's see if we have it. Uh, yeah, perfect. Just perfect. Okay, that's a that's a big step forward. So now we kind of have turned our YouTube URL video into an MP3 file into a text file. This means that we can start working with ChatGPT or OpenAI API GPT-4 to start working with the transcribed text and kind of create a chatbot with some prompts and stuff around the transcribed text as an context input. 
So let's just get on with that. And yeah, looking good so far. Okay, so we're just going to continue in the same window here. So the prompt now is going to be a bit longer. So now we have turned a YouTube video into a transcribed text file, transcribed text.text. The next step is going to be to create a chatbot function that can take the transcribed text into context or in as context and the user can ask the chatbot about the content in the transcribed text. For this we want to use the OpenAI API and the GPT-4 model. I have some information about the API here so I kind of left a space here for our documentation. Now create the chatbot function we need. So again, we're gonna go over to the OpenAI API reference. We are gonna go to chat, create a chat completion. So I just want to copy this. This uh, all the way down here from the documentation. I go back here and I go here in the middle here. Let's paste that in. So now create the chatbot function we need. Okay, submit. So hopefully now all the information we fed plus the conversation above is gonna make the GPT-4 understand what kind of function we need now. So create chatbot context. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that looks good. Chat with bot GPT-4. Yeah, I'm gonna do some alteration to that. Chat with bot. Uh, Okay, I think we're just gonna test this. It looks quite good, to be honest. Yeah, we have a break, we have a U. Uh, do we have a system message here? No, but we can ask to do that, but let's skip that for now. Okay, so we have the transcribed text inside the system message. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so let's copy this and try it and see how it works. Okay, so we're just going to go back to our code here. I'm just going to paste in the create chatbot context function and chat with chat, chat with bot function. Uh, GPT-4, I think we're going to do 0613. Just a newer model. Uh, chat with bot, I think we're going to move this. Uh, let's move that all the way down here. Uh, I think we are going to remove the print statement here. Yeah, let's remove that for now. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, so I think we're going to test it now to see if this works. So let's go back to our terminal. Let's clear this and let's run it again and see if we can start chatting with our document. Okay, it seems that it printed it anyway. Uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe it's that. Oh, okay. So I see the print is in ex exactly is in the function. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we can keep the print. But now we can see we can start talking. So let's go. Hello. Uh, let's ask something about the context here. How can I fine tune the chat GPT 3.5? turbo model. I don't think we have a conversation saver here so let's check that because we kind of want to uh, we don't want to lose our context. I I'm gonna think we're gonna save something like just add a conversation list and we should be fine. But let's see okay it seems like it's doing something here. How can I find you in the ChatGPT turbo model? So it should have some context here. Okay prepare your data good upload data set to open AI. Uh, Okay, so we also get an example script. Yeah, that's nice. Let's ask about prompt size. How much can we we do? How much can we reduce prompt size? Okay, uh, varies depending on a particular use case. However, OpenAI states that early testers have a reduction in prompt size by fine tuning. Okay, so yeah, looks like this is working. Uh, we're gonna do some more testing to see if, uh, but I think it looks good. But I don't think, let's have a quick look at the code here. I don't think we have uh, a conversation list here. So we can't really go back to earlier messages. Uh, let's try to create that actually. Okay, so I think we're just gonna go, okay, great. Can you create a list called conversation to store the messages between the user and the chatbot temporarily? So the chatbot remembers our previous messages. Let's try that. 
Uh, I think I've done this before. So we just want a list to store the conversations. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so you can see each time a user sends a message, uh, it's append uh, to the conversation along with the assistant response. This way the context is made throughout the conversation and the chatbot can reference previous messages. Yes, this is what we want. So let's just replace the, um, the function here, I think. Yeah, that should be good. So let's skip all of this. So if you want to skip this, just just uh, comment out all of this and we can go straight to the chatbot so let's save that and let's run it again so now we should probably get straight into the chatbot hello what is the price of chat gpt fine tuning okay gpt for tuning cost 20 uh, per hour of training uh, okay so we have those per thousand tokens that's good uh, great uh, how much does this reduce uh, prompt size? So what I'm going to do now is ask, what was my first question? <laughs> so we just know, uh, yeah, up to 90%. Great. What was my first question again? Yeah, okay. So now you can say hello. The, uh, yeah, perfect. So now we kind of have stored the conversation so we can go back. So we can summarize this, right? This conversation so far, right? So that means that we are kind of ready to move on. I think our chatbot is up and running. So that's very promising. Uh, yeah, perfect, perfect. So we can just quit, clear, and let's move on to our next step. Okay, so that was the back end complete. Now it's time for project front end. So like mentioned, we are gonna use a Flask app. I think we're gonna use HTML, JavaScript. Uh, the plan for the UI is to have a text box. We can put our YouTube URL in. We want a button to click so we can transcribe. And for that, I think we want some kind of message that kind of says like, uh, transcribing, please wait. And when it's done, it says like, uh, transcribe complete you can now ask questions we want a text box for the chatbot uh, input and the response and I think we want to style the UI to give it like more of a cool look team we'll see we have to pick a team uh, but that's basically it again we're just gonna use GPT-4 to do this uh, maybe we change up the system prompt we'll see but uh, yeah let's just get into it what I always start with when I'm gonna do the UI, uh, I start with just the prompt. So you can see here is the prompt I'm gonna feed into ChatGPT. Hello, I have uploaded our backend code. So that's gonna be ytchat.py. That takes a YouTube video URL, transcribe it into a text file. We then have the chatbot that takes the transcribed text file in as context. So we can ask the chatbot about the content in the video. Our next step is gonna be to create a Flask app UI for this code. Here's a list of things we want in the UI. So we want a text box for the user to input the YouTube URL. We want a button to click to start the transcription. A message that shows when the transcription is complete. And a text box for the user to input the messages to a chatbot. And a text box for the chatbot to respond in. Uh, and I also like to refactor the original uh, Python code. Can you help refactor the YouTube uh, YouTube chat Pi, so we can use it in our Flask app. Then create a Flask app uh, to the file name app2.py. Include all the functions we need in the code. Okay, great. Let's copy that. Let's go back to GPT-4 here. Let's paste in our prompt. Let's upload the itchat.py. Okay, so we're just gonna submit this and see if we get somewhere with this. Okay, so that this has now completed. Uh, if we go further down here, you can kind of see we created a refactored YouTube chat.py, perfect. And it started working on app2.py, so this is gonna create all the roots and stuff. Uh, perfect, and we downloaded app2.py. We downloaded a refactored IT chat.py too. And we go now create the index.html because we need that too. We downloaded that. It says uh, place this in a templates directory. 
So if we look here, we place this in templates here, index, perfect. And what we have now is, uh, so I open this, here is kind of our index. So I downloaded the file, I just pasted it in here. Here you can see all of our roots. Uh, I have hard-coded the OpenAI key here. Uh, that is of course not best practice, but uh, yeah, just gonna do it for this video. So you can see, uh, we import OS, we import Flask, right? And we import from uh, EtherChat Refactored, we import all of our functions. So you can see we have download YouTube video function, convert to MP3 to MP4 to MP3, transcribe audio to text, chat with bot, create chatbot context. And here you can kind of see this is a refractured Python file because, of course, we don't want to to be running this, right? So we need a refractured one that only includes our functions. That's the way I like to do it, at least. Again, we hardcore our API key here. And yeah, that is basically, I think, all we need. So I think we're just gonna spin this up now and see if it works. Hopefully it will. So let's just go python app2.py, right? Okay, so far so good. Let's open this. All right, this is something, I think. Okay, so we got our window here. We can adjust this. We have our enter YouTube video. Let me zoom in a bit. Video URL, transcribe video. Okay, yeah. Uh, so let's just grab our URL here. Uh, this is gonna be ChatGPT Turbo. Okay, go back here. Paste in our transcribe video. So I'm kind of yes, transcribing. Please wait. Okay, that's good. Let's check the back end. Yeah. It's downloading the video, perfect. It's transcribing it to MP3. And now it's gonna start transcribing. So I kinda wanna know if, when we complete this now, if we get like, we should get a message here that says transcribe, or transcription complete or something. What was the message? We were supposed to get uh, transcription complete. You can now chat with the bot, okay. So let's monitor that. Uh, but other than that, li this looks good. A very boring UI though. But of course, the next thing we are gonna do is stylize this. So we need to pick a style, um, but hopefully... Okay, transcription complete. You can now chat with the bot. Okay, so let's ask it some questions. So, uh, hello. Um, how much can fine tuning reduce prompt size i think we asked that before send ah i like it fine tuning can significantly reduce your prompt size uh, 90 percent perfect okay so let's ask something else mm. give me a step by step guide to Fine tune chat GPT 3.5 turbo. Okay, so that's probably gonna take a bit longer. Uh, remember, we are using GPT 4 here, uh, but yeah, this looks great, right? Exactly what we wanted, but of course, we need to stylize this, it's very boring. Uh, but for now, this is looking good, so hopefully, you get a step by step guide here now. Uh, yeah, that's triggered. Take some time. We could have... Okay, here we have it. So, here's a simplified step-by-step -step guide. Prepare your data set, upload data, fine-tuning run, wait for fine-tuning to complete. Yes. All right. This looks good, right? Uh, I think we're just gonna move on straight to try to stylize this. So, let me show you how I usually do that. Okay, so the first thing I did, uh, I changed up the system prompt. So you are a software developer with deep expertise in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Your task is to help the user style the Flask, uh, Flask app. Always think in a step-by-step -step way, but creating a plan before you write the code. Okay, so that is our new system prompt. The next step is going to be to select GPT-4. 
And then I think I'm gonna just go... Okay, so we're just gonna go, hello, this is my index HTML now. So we're gonna paste in our code here. I have uploaded an image of how the app UI looks now. I think it's very boring. We want to create a smooth UI that is inspired uh, by the Miami Vice 80s style. Can you help me? So the next thing we're gonna do is go here, take a screenshot of our app, right? So it's like this, I think. Okay, so let's save that. And I uploaded it here. And let's just press submit and see what happens. Okay, so you see it tried to implement all the things we asked for here. So you can see define a color palette, choose a font, style the background, update fields and input fields and buttons, icons and images, responsive design, interactive elements, refine the elements, okay? So we started to write some HTML code here, but uh, I want to ask for the full new updated index.html. So I'm just going to go, can you give me the full new updated index.html? Okay, so it didn't include the script, so I just ask, just include the scripts too. And then we ended up with this code here, so let's copy it, right? Uh, yeah, this looks good. Let's go back here. And delete this, paste in our new index. Okay, let's cancel this, clear. And remove this. And let's run it again. Hopefully it looks a bit different now. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, pretty cool. The color palette is a bit off though. Can't really see what's going on here. Can we change this? Uh, okay, but I kind of like this part. Uh, but I can't really see what's going on here. So let's do a screenshot. And let's ask it to... Okay, so let's save this. Okay, so we uploaded image. I just went, this is the look now. Image I uploaded. It's a bit hard to read the text inside the boxes. Create more contrast, but keep the style. So let's try that. Uh, yeah, it's like pink on pink and yeah, it's a bit hard to read everything. So let's see what it comes up with now. Okay, so here is kind of the idea it came up with. Uh, I think we're just going to copy it, right? And we pasted it into our index. Now let's try to run it again and see what it looks like now. Okay, that's much better. Yeah. I think that's much better. So let's screenshot that and get our response back, right? Okay, so let me save that. Okay, so I uploaded the image again and I just wanted to change up a few things. So I just went, this is the look now. Image I uploaded, here is the index.html code. So we pasted in our index.html. Just change the color of the buttons. Can we also take an image and I put in the size here, URL as a background. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so we got a new HTML file back. I just write a complete full new HTML code so I can copy it because it kept dividing it into smaller chunks. So we got a full new code here. I copy that, pasted it in here. And now let's try to see how it looks. Uh, I also added an image to the background. So let's see if that works. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna be happy with that. You can see we have this kind of glow here on the buttons. That's pretty cool. So I think uh, I'm gonna make a different background image now with um, Dolly 3. And then we're gonna test it a final time. Okay, so I created these images with Dolly 3. So I thought this was pretty cool. So I just uploaded this to Azure, I copied the URL, I pasted it in here, uh, yeah, in our index.html. Okay, so let's run it, Python app to the pie. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, that looks great, right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's go grab our YouTube video. Okay, paste it in here, transcribe. Transcribing. Oh, that's a cool font, right? Transcribing. Please wait. So we can go. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so hello. How much does the fine tuning reduce prompt size? Okay. Just have to wait until this is done. Okay, transcription is complete. You can now chat with the bot. Perfect. Okay, so let's send this. Hopefully, we will get a 90% answer here. Yes. Okay. Early testers were able to reduce prompt size by 90%. Perfect. Okay, so I gotta say, very happy how this project turned out. I really enjoy the UI. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I kind of like the whole process by using the two things we have learned in the previous episodes to create a yeah kind of cool project right uh, at least I think so and remember we can expand on this going forward we can start to incorporate some rag some yeah maybe some fine tuning there's a lot of stuff we can evolve this project if we wanted to but for now I think this is a perfect project based on the two first episodes so I think I'd be just gonna call it there. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give the video a like maybe, maybe subscribe. There's gonna be much more coming uh, as we've been doing today. Uh, but anyway, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.